Hello, welcome or welcome back to Hazel Jane Tarot and today I'm bringing you a review of the Wheel of the Year Tarot. Now this is a mass market deck that's published by Lou Scarabeo and the little white book is by Maria Carati and the artwork is by Antonella Platano who I understand is um, an Italian comic book artist. So this is a deck that I picked up in my local shop, um, you know, my local esoteric shop. And it's one that I had seen um, and been a little bit interested in, but um, had sort of forgotten about and then just sort of picked up on a whim. So it comes in this little tuck box, which I have unceremoniously um, chucked behind the sofa. I'm not using that to store it in. I did actually... Um, just on the same day that I bought the deck, I had come across this little wooden box in a shop, which um, was just like that, like a raw wood box, which I painted um, and did the design similar to the back on the lid of the box. So you can see my <laughs> rough attempts to copy the illustration. So that's what I've been storing the deck in. And it's been um, it's been a nice thing to have. And I, it actually has made the deck a little bit more special to me because it's been sitting out in this box and then I've been able to get it really easily by just flicking open the box. So I might I might get some more of these for other decks. Anyway, <laughs> it doesn't come with that box. So this is the back design. Um, so we have the, the decks um, inspired by the Wheel of the Year, as the name would suggest, and we have the four seasons represented in these images, but also in these symbols, which the little white book tells me are um, traditional symbols to represent the seasons. So spring, obviously, summer, um, autumn or fall and winter. So the this is a deck that I initially didn't think I would like, but it has turned out to be a very good reading deck for me. Um, it reads um, very easily. Um, so I'm going to start off by showing you the court cards because um, that gives you a good idea of one of the strengths of this deck. So this is the cups first of all and you can see that the artist has stuck with um you know the same color scheme throughout the the court um and this is the cups are for springtime and then we have the wands which are for summer and again it's so clear and um, because of the color of the clothing of the characters which um, suit you're in. Then we have the pentacles, which are associated with autumn, and then the swords, which associate with winter. So it gives, um, as I said at the beginning, the artist is, as I understand it, a comic, a comic artist. And it does give the a reading with this deck, a kind of a graphic novel feel where you have, um, you know, these the sort of squares framed with the border of these images, um, which are very clearly colour coded for the season that rep that the suit is supposed to represent. As you can see from a flick through the court cards, there, there's absolutely no um, diversity of skin colour in this deck. It's um, it depicts only white people, um, and it it really does have that uh, similar sort of vibe, I guess, to a deck like. The Rider Waite Smith or the Anna K Tarot, in that it sort of seems to be representing um, a not quite real Northern European storybook kind of world. Um, it doesn't represent the real world and it doesn't have the diversity of the real world in it at all. Um, you've got the occasional older character, usually the kings, as you can see here, um, but mostly. We have very stereotypical body shapes um, and we have lots of young characters and so on. So one of the reasons that I initially thought I probably wouldn't really like this deck is because of the lack of diversity um, and because of the the sort of the, the comic style or the graphic novel style of the way women's bodies in particular are illustrated. Um, but as I say, the, the colour kind of scheming and the seasons um, that are used throughout really consistently sort of won me over in the sense that it just reads really clearly. Um, the little white book gives each card a little subtitle and I just want to share with you some of those because they go for every for every card. So 
for example here we have the the swords court um so the little white book gives us the princess of or the page of swords is the young lookout the knight of swords is the courageous warrior the queen of swords is the lady of the snow and the king of war of swords is the lord of the law so these kind of um, little titles again to me hearken to a kind of storybook feel again i don't know if any of the titles are associated with the sort of esoteric golden dawn titles um they don't seem to be at first glance um and uh but they if for a, a learner of tarot i guess they do give a little bit of um of extra nuance to the meaning um so here are the cups in the minor arcana and you can see the cups again are associated with spring and they mostly depict blonde people actually in the in the cups and the little titles again are kind of they're kind of fun you know uh so the the cups we have the triumph of love for the two of cups um which would remind me of like thumbelina getting married in the flower you know so again that sort of fairy tale um fairy tale feeling because here again we have people in a bird's nest which scale wise obviously that's not realistic um so it, it really has that sort of fairy tale storybook feel to it um this is called the happy event um then we have the beating rain and the trodden garden so it's not just the spilt cups that are the issue here but it's the the broken flowers as well um so they are very similar to the Rider Waite Smith um, in terms of the composition of the images and the meanings behind the cards. But they're just, you know, maybe have been given a slightly different, slightly different spin. So we have uh, Six is Sweet Nostalgia, The Flight of the Butterfly for the Seven of Cups, which um, gives it a, a slightly different angle. But I guess floating away on a butterfly is fairly unrealistic. <laughs> Um, like you know, gazing at the the cups filled with different things in the RWS, um, the Eight of Cups. I think this gives a slightly different feel. It's the sad goodbye, um, and because of the point of view of the woman in the card, the the narrative does seem to be like being left as opposed to the RWS Eight of Cups, which would focus more just on the person leaving. Um, so that would maybe add a different spin to um. To that card if it came up in a reading particularly in maybe a, a love reading or something like that so that's interesting maybe um and might put you off if that was very different from how you read the eight of cups um and then we have the nine of cups which is a uh, a joyful jaunt in the country according to the title and then the ten of cups so the and again you know we have a very stereotypical kind of conventional family in the sense of you know they're all uh that we've got a man and a woman and, and a child and a pet and you know it's it's um kind of cliched uh family depiction which again won't be for everybody in terms of this being a usable deck um so have a look at the swords we have a few more animal depictions in the swords which feel a wee bit out of place in the deck overall because mostly it does depict depict people in every card um so let's see um so again two of swords which tends to be more about internal conflict and making a decision here we have um two people fighting each other inside a knot which is a bit strange <laughs> and again that could be come from a particular fairy tale that i'm not familiar with i don't know we have the two sharpened blades as the title um and the little guidebook says a balanced force, conflicting emotions and thoughts, doubts and decision, quarrelsomeness and hostility. So very similar to a conventional RWS in terms of its little white book meaning. Just the depiction is a little bit different, um, which would maybe introduce a bit more of an element of conflict for me into a reading of that. Um, the Three of Swords is, is quite different. The title is The Keepers of the, the, Keepers of the Darkness. Um, but the meaning that the writer of the little guidebook is going for is really to do with that sort of mental, not to do with heartbreak so much as mental uh, painful emotions um, and being preoccupied with um, 
you know, negative thought patterns and ruminations and so on, which um, that works fine for me. Then the four, again, is another little animal. The four of swords, we have the long hibernation, which similar meaning, but depicted with an animal. So those are a little bit out of key, I think, with some of the rest of the cards. The seven, interesting, the seven of swords, which... Um, is the one with in the RWS. I wish I had lifted it to, show, to compare. Sorry, the RWS has the guy sneaking off with the swords. And here we have the dangerous enchantress, according to the little subtitle. Um, shady undertakings and deception. So again, in a romantic, in a romance reading, this would maybe give a particular spin um, to the seven of swords. And then we have... The Eight of Swords, the ill little girl, um, which again is a different spin from that um, sort of imprisoned in your own thoughts or you're keeping yourself prisoner, which we tend to come across in the RWS interpretations of the Eight of Swords. It's a little bit different. And again, with the illness aspect. And I would, when I'm reading, I would use these narrative elements that are included in those depictions of the swords um, or of the cards. Like I wouldn't let... You know, just because it's a little bit different from the RWS, I wouldn't let my prior knowledge and study override what I was actually looking at in the image. So let's have a quick look at the wands. So you might have noticed in the in the aces we have these little fairy figures. And those are the only cards apart from one of the majors that a little fairy appears in. Um, and again, the fairies, it's not really my my favourite thing in a deck um, to have these sort of little pixie like depictions of fairies and um it did maybe i thought it might put me off the deck at the beginning um but again it just reads really well <laughs> so even though on paper it's not really what i like in a deck anyway i've come to quite like it so here are the wands and the wands are summertime i like how the four of wands is depicting a tree house that's been created you know it gives you that and the, the child jumping up in celebration it does give you a bit of that um, similar feeling of the RWS Four of Wands with it being, um, with it being depicted in a different way. One of the cards I particularly like in this is the Six of Wands. Um, I bought this deck on the first of May on May Day, and seeing the crowning of the May Queen in the Six of Wands just made it feel like a very appropriate deck for May Day. Um, and the Eight of Wands, I mean, I've, I've never been a fan of the Eight Wands flying through the air depiction of the Eight of Wands. So here, this um, arrival of a message seems uh, much clearer. Um, the idea of defending, you know, defending your boundaries and defending your crops from all the, the, the birds. Um, that metaphor for the Nine of Wands, I think, works really well. Um, you know, the, the burden the burden being carried, the long way home and so on. So those, I think that the wands work pretty well in terms of the narrative they tell. And then let's have a quick look at the pentacles, which are associated with autumn. Um, <clears throat> I do miss in the three of pentacles, the, the element of collaboration that you get in a lot of, in a lot of decks that show, you know, the commission, the person who's maybe commissioned the art and the person working on the art in the same image. The Two of Pentacles, this idea of juggling, um, and juggling a burden is not really so obvious. It's a very more playful approach. Um, <coughs> look, they've got the five of, the five of Pentacles. Is somebody is hiding under a toadstool? Again, it's a sort of that magical sense of scale. These children sitting on a nut. It's uh, it's not explained in any way in the guidebook what they're going for or if those reference particular fairy tales, um. I've always quite liked the pregnant depictions of the seven of pentacles, you know, the idea of waiting, you know, don't harvest the apple just yet. It's not ready. Um, that works quite well for me. Um, you know, the eight of pentacles, just the, they're quite clear. This nine of pentacles, instead of having the, the solitary woman in the garden enjoying, you know, her wealth. Here we have somebody harvesting, um, you know, there's a sense of labor and, you know, it's like a development from this card, I guess, um, which works well within the deck. Um, and then here we have, now they've got the, the wine that was 
from the grapes that have been harvested, you know, and they're enjoying the final fruits of, of the labours. So the minor arcana, I think I like, and the quartz I liked particularly, because of the the storytelling of the seasons and because of the the colour consistency um, and the sort of little narrative going through the minor arcana. So once I got sort of to look at those, I did start to like the deck a bit better. The major arcana, I initially was a bit um, more ambivalent and still am a bit more ambivalent about. So in the guidebook, she says that the major arcana are not, there's no systematic way that they're allocated to the seasons. Um, it's just as they were being drawn, they sort of seem to suggest certain seasons and, and that was, the, the artist just kind of went with it. So they they're seen as sort of overseeing the whole year as opposed to being you know a certain number of each of the major arcana being associated with a particular season to fit with the wheel of the year um idea so we have the fool the <coughs> the magician you can see is female um here the subtitle for this card is daughter of the goddess but apart from the gender the symbolism and the way it's presented is very Rider Waite Smith. I mean, it really is a Rider Waite Smith clone deck in its own way. Just, just changed it up a little bit. The High Priestess, the Guardian of the Occult, and the Empress, um, the Daughter of the Moon Goddess. So you can see this is sort of part of what I was saying about the the depictions of female bodies being very much like a kind of graphic novel, comic artist style, which is a very idealized and isn't really my cup of tea shall we say and male bodies are presented in the same way it's all you know muscles and so on so we have uh the emperor is the son of the sun god so they you know are a pair the daughter of the moon goddess and the son of the sun god the hierophant is the man of sound counsel the lovers uh, showing a hand fasting and the chariot is the brilliant messenger then we have strength who looks very much like the emperor um strength is the young lion i'm not super keen on this idea of strength um but it, i mean strength's not my favorite card anyway it's okay <laughs> the hermit and then we have the wheel. So the wheel, in, including the idea of the wheel of the year very clearly, um, rather than the wheel of fortune, we have the four seasons really clearly depicted. And again, in the justice card, we've got you know the winter and the summer and sort of balance of opposites depicted in that way. Um, the hanged one who's coming out of like a chrysalis of ice which is kind of interesting and just the very coming of spring here and the sun rays coming down which is an interesting depiction death um is the black lady so a female depiction of death and we have you know the the wintry scene but it's very much to me evocative of cyan you know with the bonfire and the pumpkins and and the potentially moon in eclipse there temperance one of the cards that i really didn't like and still don't really like in the deck is you know temperance as a little fairy the water fairy and the pouring is just so clearly like just pouring i really like depictions of temperance where you have that sort of magical pouring where it doesn't seem it breaks the laws of physics that you could be pouring water from one jug to the other in this way um Anyway, so no, that's not my favourite. And again, you see the thawing of the winter into spring. Um, the devil is called here the diabolical rose. So, yeah, you see what I mean about the, <laughs> the bodies. Um, the tower. The star. The moon. The sun. Then we have judgment and the world, and the world is from the box. And again, very similar to the wheel of the year, 
she'll win the four seasons so yeah the the, the major arcana i don't enjoy as much in this deck as i enjoyed the sort of narrative cards in the minor arcana but that's kind of quite often the way i feel about tarot decks actually um so in terms of card stock it's quite a bendy card um so it's low scarabeo mass market deck some people might find it a wee bit thin i like it let me see if i can do this Come on, yeah. So it is, I'm not a great riffle shuffler, as you can tell, but with the cardstock being very bendy, it actually riffles really, really easily. And I've been able to practice <laughs> riffle shuffling with this deck. Um, and I wouldn't bother, you know, I know some people like to cut the borders off and with the multiple languages, um, I certainly wouldn't bother doing that with this deck and I it would mess up the back design and it doesn't doesn't bother me and I think the frames kind of work fairly well with it being um with it being like a very graphic novel style deck. Um I have been working with this deck with reversals even though the backs are not fully reversible which I don't normally do actually if the if the back isn't reversible I normally don't in reversals but it just seems to work fairly well with reversals so um so a, a spread and with this deck to me it just it just tells a story very clearly you know um and with like with a particular question in mind, I've found very often when I turn over the cards to do a reading for myself, I can see very clearly, very quickly, okay, this looks good, or no, this is this is probably not gonna work out, and so on. So so as I say, it's a deck that has surprised me. I didn't think I would like it. Um there are things for certain to criticize about it um most particularly in terms of its diversity and it would be nice to have had a little bit more you know but it's not really possible with these tiny little white books that cover multiple languages um you know if there was a particular fairy tale or story that the creator was referencing it would have been nice to find out what those were but having said that this is one of the decks i've been using the most recently and yeah i do really like it so it's a nice easy reader you know cards like this you can see you know they're putting the like the the dam up against the flood and then you, know, you put it that way you sort of get the sense of maybe being overwhelmed by the flood or it's not going to quite work and um, so the reversals to me tell a pretty clear story um so do you have this deck have you worked with this deck do you like this deck do you hate this deck can you cope with the comic book bodies <laughs> in this deck? Um, I would very much like to have a chat with you about it in the comments. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you back here again soon. Bye.